Happy Saturday, everybody. Championship weekend here in Indianapolis. My name is Jason Hammer. We're talking Bama. We're talking Georgia. Sweet home Alabama. The devil went down to Georgia. It's all going to be broken down right here today on All Indiana Bet. Hey, I'm Scott Long, and welcome SEC fans to the place where there's no snow, not Tennessee, not Kentucky. Thank you for coming to Indianapolis. Here we go, right here, right now. Let's go. This is All Indiana Bets, presented for the people, powered by Caesar Sportsbook and Lunazul Tequila. Feed the wolf. I'm fired up. I'm excited. We've been doing this show every Saturday since college football yeah. season started, Scott, and it comes down to this. Indianapolis, our own backyard, hosting the college football national championship. It kind of brings a tear to my eye, though. Right? We started this at the start of the first game of this major college football season. We've had ups and downs here, just like the season itself. But yes, here we go. Indianapolis, do you feel like a fire going on in the city over this? Where, where are you at? Man, I work downtown yes. through the week. My right on the circle. Show is right on the circle. The stage is set up, the monitors are up, you hear the sound check from the bands. Right. Nobody takes more pride in putting on an awesome event than the people of Indianapolis do. And we do it all the time. So that's why it rubbed me the wrong way when that moron writer from the Atlanta Journal-Constitution yeah. was talking about how expensive Indy is, how cold Indy is. Yeah, that was so good. You're in Atlanta. Have you ever priced <laughs> anything in Atlanta? I mean, first off, and then it was like, hey, go to Louisville, it's a lot cheaper. Yeah, if there's any major sporting event anywhere, the hotels are gonna go up. That's how it's set up. So then I see that, I feel like there is a fire for a lot of the people that live in Indianapolis, and I could see a lot of Alabama and Georgia fans that are excited, looking out of their windows, right. and walking through the skywalks, right. and being afraid to touch the sidewalk because it's too cold. Hey, we put everything down, we're fine. Live it up, wear an extra coat, you're Boom. gonna have a great time. Bundle up and let's get down to business, and we're gonna get down to business here. Georgia has opened up as a two and a half point favorite. Yeah. Went up from three, uh, now it's down to two and a half. Over under opened up at 53, now that is down to 52. Take a look at the public right. betting percentages here, Scott. 64% of the bets are on Alabama. 47% of the money on Georgia. Anything stick out to you here? Well, what sticks out is, is it makes sense. You got the, the, the champion of all champions when it comes to college football is Alabama. So the tide getting like three points initially, you're like, who wouldn't jump on that? But the, the math, basically there's been one game where Alabama played amazing football and that was against Georgia. Right. So that's what's in the public. The sharp betters are like, that was one game. What not are the sharp betters? For someone yeah. that's watching this maybe for the first time, what's a sharp better? Okay, so we're not sharp betters. We can't go to a casino and lay $100,000 down on a game. The sharp betters are usually syndicates of people that have an expert. There's a lot of big money that goes in. So that's kind of who the sharp betters is. They often go against what might seem to be the public. They will fade the public. Who's the public? All the rest of us. Right, the people that bet five, 10, right. 20 bucks a game, right. right? Right, so I think it kind of made sense why you would think Alabama would be, you know, getting most of the money, but you look at that 53-47, that means that most of the sharp money went into Georgia. So let's talk about the total hill first. We're gonna talk about the yeah. point spread. We'll talk about winners and losers coming up, but a lot of people get into the total bet. Right now, set at 52. Scott, what are you thinking? Over, under, is this a play for you? Um, it's not a strong play, but I, I kind of lean towards the over. I think most of the points are gonna be scored in the second half. That's kind of where I look at things. If you've looked at, uh, especially SEC championship games, they are wild affairs in the second half. So, uh, I would lean over, definitely lean over if uh, for the second half if it's a low scoring first half. I'm with you, I'm gonna ride the over. Not an official play for yeah. me. I've got some official plays we'll get to in just a moment. Real soon. But the over is the play for me here. I think we got a gift having this go from 53 down to 52. 
All right, let's get into some official picks. Yeah. Picks we're going to put on the board. Look at that right there. Mm. Scott Long, five and two. You are on a college football roll. Give us your first pick, Bama versus Georgia. What are we looking at? So this is gonna, you're gonna find this out later in the show. Uh, for all the week, I was on Alabama plus three. That three was a major number to me. Now, two and a half, it came in this morning when I got here. I'm like, I don't like that. I've been rethinking my position. I look at Georgia coming out like a house on fire in that first half. They got their doors blown out by Alabama just a month ago. They've never beaten Alabama. So that first half, I think Alabama will just survive Georgia's push. And then the crafty one in that second half, I see Nick Saban getting together with Bryce Young and figuring it out. So this would be the way I would love to play this game. I love Georgia in the first half. If Georgia covers for me, take Alabama in the second half. I am going to go full game. Okay. You're going to half, I'm going full game. Now, the eyeball test for me tells me that Georgia looked like the better team the last time they played. Georgia beat the brakes off of Michigan. They bullied Michigan. Yeah. My eyeballs tell me that it's Georgia. But I could not live with myself if I passed up on Nick Saban, the Heisman Trophy winning quarterback, and points. At the beginning of the year, if I would have told you, I'll give you Nick Saban, Bama, a Heisman Trophy winning quarterback in points, would you take that against anybody in America? Hell, I might take that against the Jacksonville Jags right now. So I'm going with Alabama in this one. I think it's gonna be a close game, I really do, but I think Bama with points and the better quarterback getting points is the difference maker in this game for me. So if we're talking money line, I think we definitely agree on this game. We would both be on Alabama at the end. I just lean first half most on Jordan. Now, if you want to take a look at our bets, you can either watch this show in its entirety. Who wants to do that? But who wants to look at us? Yes. Take a look at the QR code we got up here in the corner of the screen. Scan that bad boy in. You've got all the plays from Scott, all the plays from me, and that is how you can make some money today and hopefully on Monday as well. Could you imagine what the ratings would be if, on our show if we looked like those guys on ESPN but had my record? I don't have the budget for the uh, sweater vest and turtleneck. <laughs> Oh, that's true. I, what's with the turtlenecks? These uh, young, like, analysts. I've seen it all over on college basketball. The Big Ten Network the other night had two dudes with turtlenecks. They looked like they were, like, in a boy band. It was like, this is basketball. At least wear a shirt. I believe it was Happy Gilmore who once said, if I saw myself in clothes like that, I'd have to kick my own blade. <laughs> um, coming up next, we talked about the sharp earlier. Yep. This is a guy that does it for a living. Wait. Always in deep thought. Oh, Look at he, that. You know what he's thinking? Is the Ponderosa still open around the corner? <laughs> Do I have to go to Anderson for the Golden Corral? Let's find out. The Cash Man, Alan Cashman, joins us next. Talk he's the best. Bama and Georgia right here on All Indiana Bets. Hey, welcome back everybody to all Indiana bets. Let's let's cut straight to the chase. You're not here for me. You're here for the guy that's on my right in these boxes. His name is Alan Cashman. His college football winning percentage on this show this year is what Cashman? Right around 68% for the college football and we're 21, eight and two college football, college basketball combined for the season. Five, zero oh, and one the last three weeks. We could go on and on and on. The records speak for themselves. So. Cashman, the people want to know, this is why they're here. They ain't here for me. They certainly ain't here for Scott and Hammer. They're here to hear, hear your pick on the college football national championship game. So uh, I'm going to give the floor to you and Cashman, take it away. All right, Pete, thank you. you know, coming into this one, I think it's pretty clear this season was about Bama and Georgia. Everyone else was a level below them and the rest of the 
uh, rest of the nation, an uneventful college football playoff. Bama coming into this has beaten Georgia seven straight times, including 41 to 24 about a month ago in the SEC championship game. In that game, Georgia was minus two in turnover margin for the game. I feel really the only test Georgia really faced was against Bama this year. They really played a weak SEC schedule. First meeting Georgia three for 12 on third down. Uh, Bama went seven for 14 on third down. Georgia went for less than seven yards per pass. Bama threw for 9.6 yards per pass. Bama has a Heisman quarterback, a championship coach. They just beat Georgia a month ago pretty convincingly, I thought. Georgia 0-4 against the spread following a, against the spread win. And Bama 5-1 and against the spread their last six as a dog. I'm going to take Bama plus three here in the championship game. You know what smart people do, Cashman? Smart people, when Nick Saban is an underdog, they take Nick Saban and the points. And you're a smart man, and that's what we're doing right here. And smart people should also go to your website to get more of your picks, because if they want to make money, that's the way to do it. That's right. Come to the cashmanwins.com through this weekend. Still have the holiday pricing up. You can get everything that I put out there for less than a dollar a week, uh, two years, one year subscription, whichever suits you. That's at the cashmanwins.com. All right, Hammer. All right, Scott. The Cashman is on your side. Alabama plus three. You guys are all on the same side here. I'm going to send it back over to you now. So I pulled a switcheroo. Uh, that was taped yesterday. I still would have been. That half point means a lot to me in this game. As Hammer and I both think, it's going to be a pretty close game. Mm -hmm. I don't think this is a blowout. These teams have prepared all season for this game. So, um, Wow, uh, I like your three Cashman very hard to ever fade the Cashman, right? He has been He's brilliant. Been a, a big, hairy American winning machine. Yes, That's yes. what Alan Cashman is. Now, in addition to the point spread, yeah. the money line, the over-unders, you can do some player props. There are some ways to make some money on this national championship game without picking a team. And we're going to play around a feeling it or fading it, and we're gonna find out what you think about some of these prop bets, okay? Okay. So first up, Alabama quarterback Bryce Young. Over or under 314 and a half passing yards for the Heisman Trophy winner, Scott. So he uh, bombed the Bulldogs last time. So I look at it as I think there's gonna be some shifts. Kirby Smart's not gonna allow that to happen two games in a row. I love Bryce Young, but I just don't see that. So I fade Bryce Young on the 314. I am with you on this one. As much as I hate to agree with you, Scott, mm, I know. Uh, Bama's also down their best wide receiver. That's going to be a factor for the passing game here, and we think it's going to be a close game. Pretty much everybody thinks it's going to be a close game. That means you're going to see a lot of ground and pound. Nick Saban, if he can establish the run, you're going to see Bama run the ball. That means a smaller total for Bryce Young. All right, so let's go to uh, another one here. Stetson Bennett, Georgia quarterback, over or under one and a half touchdown passes. Uh, I hate Stetson Bennett. I mean, he is a game manager. I guess you have a great defense. That helps. I'm really hoping he comes out for my bet in the first half and just plays solid. But this is why I lean Alabama for the game. He's the difference in this game. You got a Bryce Young who will be playing in the NFL, and you got Stetson Bennett who will be lucky to uh, be playing in the USFL. So Nice. Nice. I hate the name Stetson. I'm sorry. I, I don't like it's it. It's a cologne. It's not somebody's name. Um, but I tell you what. You smell good in it, though. I got to say, uh, thank you, you do not. Your wife put all the Christmas money into that Stetson cologne. 60% of the time, it works every time. <laughs> I'm going over. I'm going over. Now, when you say over on touchdown passes, right. you think, oh, my goodness, this is going to be like Joe Burrow throwing bombs to chase down the field. That ain't what we're talking about here. I can see two screen passes. I can see a couple flares out of the backfield in the red zone making its way to the end zone. At the end of the day, those count as touchdown passes. I think you're going to see some points scored in this game. So I think Stetson Bennett will go over. Now, you're not talking about bombs away here, right. but I think he can get two in the red zone here. I just imagine you in your office with like a protractor and you're just like breaking everything down. You're like, I see screens. You got a magic eight ball maybe you're right. shaking, right? I've tried to learn to count cards, but <laughs> instead of doing that, I'm focused on screen passes. Thank you. Uh, last one here, Alabama running back Brian Robinson. 
Went over 200 yards against Cincinnati. How about this? Over under 64 against the Georgia Bulldogs in the national championship game. Now, how to, tell the change on this one, Hammer. If we, uh, this was 81 and a half, right? Earlier this week. What is going on there? I've never seen anything shift, let alone a prop. They really failed on that front. They, they put it down at 64 because so many people like us, I don't think would have taken it at 81. No. 64, I wish I would have taken the 81. I'd be middle in this all day. You're probably looking at 75 yards. I love him in this situation. I'm with you. Failing it. it. Absolute fade at 81. Yeah. But 65, yeah. I think Bama wants to run the ball. I right. think that's about right. Georgia's got a good defense, but Bama's going to move the ball. Uh, I'm feeling this one as well. All right, let's switch gears a little bit. Yep. Take a little break from the national championship talk. We'll come back to that later in the show. But this is Indiana. We've got to talk about some college basketball. Purdue in action later today. What do we think about the Boilermakers? Is it a bounce back game? We'll get to that and maybe have a few drinks here in just a moment. Do not go anywhere. The championship weekend edition of All Indiana Bets. Come on back. All Indiana Bets, presented for the people, powered by Caesar Sportsbook. We're going to make so much money today. Not only are we going to be able to afford multiple combo meals at Arby's. There we go. We'll be able to afford a tank of gas as well. Are you a, a, a barbecue or the horsey sauce? I'm both. You mix it around. Oh my goodness. I I'm feel crazy. Like Let's get nuts. I feel excited about the rest of the day. I've never tried that. Oh, thank you, buddy. It's kind of like an Arnold uh, Palmer for fat guys. You just put it both on there and boom goes the dynamite. Is baby. it called the Craig Stadler? Then? <laughs> so there we go. The walrus right All off the bat. Indiana bets on a championship Saturday. Yeah. I'm Jason Hammer. That's Scott Long. Uh, we're going to get back to Georgia and Bama in just a little bit. But let's talk about some other ways that we can make some cash today. The Boilers, they are trying to bounce back from a rare home loss at Mackey Arena. Taking on Penn State today, nine and a half is the number. Scott Long, what say you? Well, to begin with, I was shocked by that Wisconsin game. I mean, we're talking, what happened there? I Mind blown, because it was just one guy that was just torching the Boilers defense, Davis. So here we come, Penn State, nine and a half. Only, uh, it doesn't seem like Penn State could ever cover that. I'm nervous about this game, only because I think the Boilers will handle the game, but I could see a backdoor cover. Micah Shrewsbury was the top assistant at Purdue, his great friends with Painter. Do I think Painter's gonna always have the pedal of the metal in that game? And Penn State's got a lot of dudes. They're not great players, but they're all solid. They fight hard. Uh, there's no home court advantage, we all know it, in, uh, in Happy Valley for basketball, but I would lean, I guess I'd lean Penn State. See, I feel a little bit better about this game, I think, than you do. I like Purdue in this game because they lost yeah. the way they did at Wisconsin. Spoke to a couple radio friends of mine that covered the Boilers in Lafayette, and it sounds like the last couple days in practice, Matt Painter has called out the toughness of the Boilermakers, which usually is their bread and butter. They're normally the toughest team on the floor. So with that being said, I have every bit of faith that Matt Painter is going to see a different, a tougher Purdue Boilermakers today. I'll lay the nine and a half here. This feels like a 12, 13 point win for Purdue. I think after what happened at Wisconsin, I'm sorry, versus Wisconsin, this is gonna be the best effort you're gonna get from Purdue. All right. Let's have you noticed, with, can I just say, have you noticed that I'm feeling a little tougher today? Uh, I didn't share this with you. The station owner, Dewan, called me, called out my toughness. So uh, I can't wait till I go to the bar. I'm gonna show that ability later on in the show. Can you be tough doing bets on a football show? I believe you can, and I think your record would speak for itself. Look Tough. at that little bubble right there. You know when we put a bubble up, it's about to get serious. Six and three college basketball games How this do I year. do it? It's I magic. Don't. It's magic. What I do you got? So I guess I'm going to lean right off the bat. I, you know how I like to put on my glasses. Uh -oh. This Grandpa's putting winner. his readers on. I always do this. This is uh, like what Superman puts on the cape. Uh, I call this my wake and bake special. I'm sorry. Every time Wake Forest is involved, I'm not trying to get CBD sponsorship, though, call us. Uh, <laughs> I will just tell you, Wake Forest is kind of my pet team. You've always had pet teams, usually teams you bet against. Right. 
This is my feeling team. They have a great coach in Steve Forbes. He doesn't look like he'd be. Neither one of these guys look like they should be coaching basketball. Jim Beheim forever. Beheim's got both his sons playing. They both can shoot it. They can't play a lick of defense. That vaunted 3-2 defense has been total fade all year. Four and a half. I love the Demon Deacons in this spot. All right, so we've also got some NFL football tonight. It's not just about college basketball. It's not just Bama versus Georgia. We've got games in the National Football League, and it's been a big week for the Eagles. The Eagles have announced they're doing another concert in Indianapolis, much to the dismay of the dude and the big Lebowski. But I, on the other hand, I am in on the Eagles. They're getting points against the Cowboys. Now, if you jumped on this early, this line was like at six or seven earlier in the week, which seemed ridiculous. Now it's down to four. I still like it. The Eagles are going to give you everything they've got, home game, playing for their playoff lives. I'll take the points here. And the Eagles, plus four, plus four, that will be my second official pick of the ball game here. Okay, All right, Eagles, Eagles pick. What is your favorite Eagles song? Wow, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I'm going to lead Take off. it easy. Okay, I hate Take it easy. Uh, I'm a, a definitely a big Don Hanley version, Glenn Fry songs. I would definitely go Life in the Fast Lane. The whole Hotel California album is the one classic that they have. Victim of Love, check that one out on your Oh, Spotify. you're the one guy that I don't like the popular stuff. Victim of Love. I told you Life in the Fast Lane's my favorite. I'm just telling you, Victim of Love. I like the band before they were popular. That's you, that's who you are, you're that guy. All right, coming up next, let's get to the long shot. Oh my gosh, finally, we've been waiting on this too long. Go ahead. We're gonna give the people what they want, a Me. long shot that Scott feels good about, you can make some money on, plus the degenerate special, the people's pick. Fiery. We're coming right back, don't go anywhere. You'll miss out on money if you don't come back. The Long Shot, presented for the people by Caesars Sportsbook. The Long Shot has been rolling. The Long Shot has been making money. And for one last time on a Saturday during yeah. college football season slash college basketball, give me a winner, Scott. Give it to me. Okay, so uh, the people that have been following on Sunday know that I've only uh, won 10 out of 11. Uh, Is that all? Yeah, so watch tomorrow. The NFL <laughs> ones have been crazy. This one feels degeneratory. I don't even know what word that is. This is like degenerate special two electric boogaloo here. Yes. <laughs> yes. So it's the South Dakota, South Dis uh, Dakota State uh, battle. Do you know what the South Dakota, the, the state is called? What are their nickname? Like where the Hoosier State and things like that? I know it ain't the Sunshine State. It is called the Sunshine State. I am not <laughs> kidding. I looked that up. I'm like, I have been to Sioux Falls many times and never seen the sun <laughs> ever, ever. I've been there in gloomy days. So. Why would I take a bad South Dakota team versus a pretty good South Dakota State team? Mike Dom's not still there, but hey, this is all about that state battle. South Dakota turns on the news. The first thing that pops up on the Sioux Falls and the Rapid City news is what? South Dakota State, South Dakota State, South Dakota State. Jack Stewart's Rabbit's there. mania. Jack Rabbit's from, uh, uh, I know, I always forget, I've been there many times. I've done comedy at the Ramada Inn. Let me tell you, great place <laughs> off of I-29. I like South Dakota. I like the Coyotes to at least cover the 17. All right. Now, let's get to the degenerate special, yeah. which doesn't even feel half as degenerate as the pick that Scott just gave. No, I kind of wrecked you on that one, but I'll tell you right now, we got the Summit League We covered. do. Who wants to bet on Bama and Georgia when you can bet on Oral Roberts and Western Illinois? Oh no, really? This is what we're talking about. We're going down to the Summit League, baby. Look, the best player on the floor is gonna be with Oral Roberts, Max Abrams. But the better team, the deeper bench, is with Western Illinois. Both of these squads are pretty equal, but I think home court actually means a little something. There are very few teams in the summit where a home court advantage matters. Western Illinois is one of those places, 
And it feels like Vegas odds makers are still giving Oral Roberts credit for what they've done in previous years. Only one of their studs is coming back. Western is a deeper squad and you're getting points. This is where you make your money at. The degenerate special, write it down, take a picture, I do not give a care. Western Illinois plus two. I love that pick. I got it. Have you ever been to Macomb, Illinois, where Western Illinois is? Here's the here's here's what you uh, if you have not been here. Here's like a, a scenic guide. You uh, you stop at the Pizza Ranch. Okay, the Pizza Ranch. I'm already in. Yeah, it's a buffet. And then after that, you take about five minutes, adjust your belt, go to Casey's and get a couple more slices of pizza. Oh, that's Casey's. all you can do in Macomb, Illinois. Boom. Or watch the Western Illinois win this game. <laughs> uh, we're gonna hit the bar here. Thank we got you. some beverages awaiting us and the best bets of the day, the ones we feel the best about. We're gonna give them to you for free yeah. next on All Indiana Bets. The best bet is brought to you by Evan Williams. Bourbon done right. Some people say it's wrong to drink bourbon before noon, yeah. but some people say it's wrong to pick a fight at Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah. Didn't stop me then, not stopping me now. You know what almost stopped us for a lot of shows? Someone stole our, our, uh, our pop, our soda that was in the fridge that, that was all set for this week. A lot of shows would be like, we're not gonna drink. We'll, straight, we'll drink it right over ice. Straight larceny bourbon, the bourbon of champions. I've got some Lunazol tequila here. Oh, oh, okay. So let's give you our best bets of the day. These are the ones we're hanging our hat on, and I love Alabama, first half, 12 and a half. Bama's good for two touchdowns in the first half. And even worst case scenario, you buy Georgia's defense shows up, and they prove that they're one of the best in college football in recent memory. Georgia's gonna get at least one, I'm sorry, Bama's gonna get at least one touchdown. And even if it's been but don't break, the Tide are gonna get in the red zone. Even if they have to settle for a couple field goals, that's over 12 and a half. I'm in on this one, first half, point total, Alabama over 12 and a half. Scott. Uh, I, I love college basketball. I love it. I love betting it. I think it's the best sport to bet. And there's so much transition that's already happened, okay? So we're looking at what happened to Texas. Texas, I'm sorry, has had a major upgrade at coach. Probably the best coach I think they've ever had. This, this Chris Beard might be the best coach in college basketball. If he's not, it's probably down the street at Baylor with Scott Drew. I'm just telling you, Oklahoma State lost the best player in the country. One of our cameramen who loves the Pistons. They lost Cunningham. They're not the same team. He got a little upset about that. I will just share with you right now, Texas is going to cover this ball easily. Oklahoma State is not an easy place to play in Stillwater. But I love the Longhorns and what I've seen from them. This is maybe an Elite Eight team. And who's leading them in scoring? Old Minnesota's Marcus Carr got transferred okay. there. And he's found his shot in the last five games. Take the Longhorns. I like that pick. Yeah. I like that. I might even put that in my ballin' on Ooh. a budget parlay. We're going to get to that and make some more picks when we come back. We're taking this thing all the way up until noon right here, right now. Wish TV and all Indiana bets. Come on back. All Indiana Bats is presented by Lunazul Tequila. Feed the wolf. All right, we've given you prop bets. We've had some fun. Yeah. Let's give everybody one pick on an NFL game tonight, Scott. We got NFL games tonight. You've got the Broncos. We've got the Chiefs. I like Kansas City. Now, I'm not in love with this game because I don't think the total is going to be very high, but I have such little faith that the Broncos can score. That's where this game is at. The last five weeks, Kansas City's offense has really hit that switch. The reason they lost to the Bengals last week was not because of the Kansas City offense. Last time I checked, that's not Joe Burrow on the other side of the field here. I like Kansas City to cover 10 and a half, basically as a complete fade against a sick and gross Broncos offense. Scott, what about you? 
Sick and gross, I love that. <laughs> you know, uh, People would say that about the screen right now. I know. <laughs> I'm sick, I'm gross. Uh, the best. <laughs> that is so sad but true. And uh, speaking of sad but true, is there anybody that has a worse gambling name than Drew Locke? He is the opposite of a lock, <laughs> unless you're fading him. So what am I doing? I'm gonna go with the Broncos. What? It's, it's a divisional battle. These two teams, this is the biggest game of the year for each other. They've kind of ruled the AFC West for a long time. So what I'm telling you right now is 10 and a half is too much in Denver. I don't care how good you are if you're the Chiefs. I like the Broncos to cover. Don't spice or sprinkle the money line. No. Chiefs are going to win. I know they have more to play for, but the Broncos are trying to hold on to some jobs, including the head coach. He's dreaming of a new quarterback. So those are our picks for yeah. individual games. But what about parlay bets? I call them sucker bets, but they are what they are. Let's say, for argument's sake, you spent way too much money last night. Okay. You party too hard in Indianapolis. Yeah. All you got is $5 left. You can take $5 and turn it into 60 with this ballin' on a budget parlay. How did you come up with ballin' on a budget? Because if you've ever been a college kid, you've had to do that before. You've had to ball on a budget. You've always had beer money, but sometimes you didn't have enough money to eat. Um, I like the Eagles plus four tonight against the Cowboys. Eagles are gonna give you everything they've got. Purdue, Matt Painter got on these guys last couple days in practice about not being tough enough. I think they get the toughness out of the boilers today. Scott gave you all the reasons to take Texas earlier. And how about the NBA? The Pacers and the Jazz. We're going under 221. Pacers are a mess right now. And Utah coming off of a back-to-back. -back. They played last night. They traveled. I like the under in this one, 221. So coming up next, we're going to have somebody else make some drinks. We've made ours, but we're going to go to the professionals. We are gonna drink a broken hatchet. Is that Look what this at that is called? Drink, though, man. A that, broken hatchet? That is fire, literally and figuratively. Look at that thing. That's a flaming mo. That's what that is. We're gonna learn how to make these bad boys next on All Indiana Bets. On the Rocks is brought to you by Evan Williams. Bourbon done right. Hello friends, Brent Holverson with Heaven Hill Brands. I'm the regional sales manager for the state of Indiana and come to you today from uh, Goodfellas Pizza, Wise Guys Lounge, the best hidden secret here in Indiana. And it's here on Mass Avenue and we have a treat today. Uh, we've got Brennan up back here who's going to be making a broken hatchet for us. And not only with Brennan, we have our global whiskey ambassador, Mr. Bernie Lovers. Bernie, welcome to Indiana. Welcome back, my friends. Always good to be back. It's good to be back here at Wise Guys. Good to be back here in Indianapolis. And I tell you, I love this drink because it's made with one of my favorite products at uh, Heaven Hill, and that's because it's bottled in bond. What are you going to do here with this, uh, with this broken hatchet? So we're actually going to light this on fire. Uh, that's how we're going to start it off. So we've got a little bit of overproof whiskey in there. What can go wrong when right. you have things on fire, right? Exactly. It's visually stunning. <laughs> this is my favorite part right here. This is, so we're gonna put bang. a little bit of cinnamon on top. <laughs> when you're making this here at Wise Guys, when people see you making this, this has to sell six more. I oh, it imagine. does, yeah. Uh, the second that somebody sees that, <laughs> everybody wants it. But lighting it on fire actually has a purpose as well, especially with the cinnamon, because it caramelizes and give it a little bit of a sweeter taste. I can smell it, just <laughs> pops. And we'll put that out and we'll actually make the drink now in here. And this will be a stirred cocktail as well. So that's uh, Evan Williams Bottled and Bond. Mm -hmm. Bottled and Bond, the first consumer protection legislation, less, uh, legislation in the history of the United States, 1897, March 3rd. You know, back then people were putting some unsafe and just anything. You could put any ingredients, safe or unsafe, into any product. So bottle and bond bourbons or any spirits have to be exactly 100 proof. Stands up in the cocktail for you all when you're making the drinks. It also has to be uh, only pure water added. So you, so all, just think about it. 1897, purity, pretty important important today too. And then you're guaranteed a good strength of the 100 proof. You have to know who made it. You have to put on the package, the distillery that made it, the unique DSP or distilled spirits plant number. You hear all these laws and regulations? 
you know, that's why I call Bottle and Bond the the uh, the Navy Seal or the Green Beret of spirits. It has all the all the badges. It has all the medals. You've got it all stirred up there. You've got your you've got your mixture. I just want to pour it slow since it was on fire, so it doesn't break the glass or anything. Right. So it's bourbon on bourbon. So it's the cocktail into <laughs> that into that bourbon too. Oh, it's even better than it looks. Ah. Ladies and gentlemen, please join us again soon for our next edition of On the Rocks. Cheers. I can't remember if it was Thomas Jefferson, Nitschke, or Homer Simpson in the episode of The Flaming Mo that said, fire made it good. That was awesome. All right, let's recap what Scott and I have got on the big board today. These are the five bets that we are officially locking in, hanging our hats on. I got Bama to win plus two and a half. I got Alabama, first half, over 12 and a half. Western Illinois, your degenerate special, getting two against Oral Roberts. Hot. Couple NFL games tonight, Eagles and the Chiefs. Those are my picks. What are you looking at? You know, it's a football show when it's pronounced Nitschke instead of Nietzsche, which uh, Nitschke. I, then in Ball State when you uh, take a philosophy class. Georgia, first half. But the guy bets. that says Jaguars. Okay, everybody Thank you does. For the you got it. You've lost on that one. Texas minus two and a half. South Dakota, take the Coyotes in over the Jackrabbits. Who's going to win in a battle between the Coyotes and the Jackrabbits? Coyotes, at least 17 points. I'd like to watch that. Wake Forest, minus four and a half. Wake and bake them. You're going to make <laughs> some money. Broncos, plus 10 and a half. Look, I don't feel great about this, but that's too many points. Hammer and I have a battle on that one. We'll see. Producer Peter back in the studio. What are Finally. you looking at, my friend? All right, so I said earlier in the Wise Guys segment that smart people, when Nick Saban is an underdog, smart people take Nick Saban and the points. Correct. So naturally, I'm going to take Georgia and lay the two and a half here. Listen, oh. listen, there's a reason Georgia is favored here. You go back to the SEC championship game, we, we all saw Alabama smoke that Georgia defense that's been vaunted all season long. And you're wondering when you look at this line, people, people when they first saw it, why is Georgia favored here? There's a reason Georgia's favored here. Georgia's been the best team in college football all year long. Don't forget too, Alabama's going to be without one of their best receivers in John Mechie in this game. That's a big deal for that offense. I think Kirby Smart, Nick Saban gets a lot of credit and deservedly so. Kirby Smart can coach too. He's gonna make adjustments. This is Georgia's moment to finally take down that big bad bully of Alabama in the curse, in the drought. They've lost seven straight to them. That ends on Monday at Lucas Oil Stadium. I'm taking the dogs, minus two and a half. All right, so basically I think we've got our grounds covered here. Yeah. I've got Bama with the points. Peter's got Georgia laying the points. We've got some prop bets and you got first half Georgia. Yeah, I think we can all agree on one thing. Tom Crean would get his butt kicked by <laughs> Alabama. <laughs> the Tom Georgia Crean. basketball. The oh my fighting Lord. Georgia Bulldogs led by Tom Crean. All right, gonna take a little break. When we come back, we're gonna reset everything that's going on this weekend and stop it. With Scott I know, Long. there we go. I feel weird that you're touching me. Let's take a break so we can make this stop. <laughs> Graphic? Oh my gosh, that is. Look, this is why we're short people on the show. We had to fire them <laughs> to make and afford that. Oh, graphic. that looks so good. And then I look at this, and you're like, wait a minute, that was really they they photoshopped the hell out of that. So <laughs> what I will tell you is this stop it segment is things that irritate me, lots of things, but this one, the whole college football season we've heard about. PIL, NIL, we've heard about transfers, and we've heard about all these things that bother college coaches. Be focused, college coaches. You want to keep your job, especially at a bad program? Cover the spread. Learn the spread. It's a new world that we live in. I've seen this. I've heard fans booing during games, and they're like, we're winning by a touchdown. Hey, kick the field goal with 10 seconds. 
Stop it. Don't think that the game is over until you cover the spread. Wisconsin was playing against Arizona State. I got them at six and a half. Game went out at eight. Paul Chris decides to go on a nine minute drive with Wisconsin. Winds up on the two yard line. Score a touchdown. Stop it. Kick a field goal. Stop it. No. He takes a knee and thinks, oh, we won by seven. No, you lost. Stop it. And that's why we have a graphic. That segment is so strong, that warrants a yeah, graphic. It's about gambling, people. Hey, this is the final Saturday show for yeah. a while. Uh, we're going to come back from March Madness, though. So tomorrow, the NFL Sunday show is going to continue after the Super Bowl. With Rachel. Yes, Racing Rachel will be here tomorrow. Uh, but this is the last Saturday show until March Madness. So thank you guys for having fun with us, being degenerates with us, drinking with us. Thank you. And hopefully making some money with us. Cheers to all of you folks. Good luck. Enjoy championship weekend. We got May through the it. May the odds be ever in your favor, baby.